Hey everybody, how are you? This is Carl from Thinkful. I'm here with Rob. Hey everybody. So today we're going to look at the Chrome DevTools uh, and the Chrome JavaScript console. Is that right, Rob? Yes, we are. Yeah, we're going to get into the smaller parts of it, the introduction, and uh, build off of that so people can uh, really start to grab a hold of how powerful the DevTools are. Perfect. So to get started, how, can I, how do you open uh, the console? Well, there's a couple ways of doing it. Uh, with the Mac, um, I always just use the shortcut of the command Alt I. Um, that's a shortcut with the keys will bring it open to you. Um, otherwise, in the uh, if you're using Chrome, up on the top right, you got the three bars. Um, you can use that within right next to the URL bar. Um, so you've got your uh, extensions over there on the right hand side. Um, you can always use those bars and it uh, will take you to the um, tools and then you can go straight to the developer tools uh, from there. Perfect. So you use the menu bar on the right, then you go to tools and then you go to developer tools and then you find here the JavaScript console. That's and, right. Yes. And, and then the, another way that you can do it that I use often is on Chrome, you can click help and search for console. And then uh -huh. the first result that comes on, you'll see that under views, developer, uh, you can find the JavaScript console right here. Um, oh, that's great. That's great. So they got three ways that you can do it practically. Exactly. And so um, now that we have these tools open, you'll see that there are a few tabs uh, here at the bottom. And today we're basically going to focus on the elements tab and on the console itself. So we spend a little bit of time on each. Um, so first and foremost, the elements tab um, allows you to understand what's happening on a given page. So this is basically the rendered HTML. Is that correct, Rob? Yes, that's correct. Okay, perfect. And then from here, you can select elements uh, inside of the DOM. So this is Thinkful's website here uh, for this example. So how, if I wanted to select Learn to Code, how can I go about finding this, uh, this piece of code, Rob? Well, the, there, uh, there's a shortcut, and there's also the regular way with your uh, with your mouse is if you go to the left there and you've got the uh, magnifying glass in the dev tools, um, you can use that, and then you can go and inspect different pieces. So if you were to take that, you can click on that, and I'll take you right to the code within the dev tools. So you see that the H1 is highlighted once you clicked on that. And okay. you also can uh, you can go on a certain element and right click, and then you can uh, ins hit the inspect from there as well. That is really cool. And so basically here, I see that there's a p tag for paragraph, and I can expand it to see the text. Yeah, so, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so here, I think I can also double click, and uh, you can actually change things here. And then you can hit enter, and you can see the changes applied in real time on the website. Now, this obviously doesn't change Thinkful website, as in if I refresh, um, you know, the real Thinkful website comes up again. It's just the way my browser, uh, the code my browser has. So it's not like you yeah. can go to a bank and change the bank's code, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take all the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and that, that's the really good part about this, Carl, is that, uh, you know, the, the, the whole concept of prototyping and uh, developing in the browser is, you know, you might not be able to change, change it for good, but when you're actually working on your code and trying to see what it looks like, just being able to make those quick changes helps you compared to having to go back to your uh, IDE and then coming back. So the, the, this is almost like its own IDE itself with the dev tools these days. And so uh, aside from uh, being able to um, select elements, so here we've just selected an element, we can change the text if we want. So here we can put a, a bunch of exclamation points because we're very excited about it. Um, on the right hand side under styles, and so let me make this a bit bigger, um, you can actually see the CSS styles that are applied to the selected element. So in our case, it's uh, this H2 right here that says behind every successful developer is a mentor. And so here we could go ahead and change the text color to a beautiful, uh, I don't know, should we do a green, a beautiful green color? I'm sure my designer is going to love this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then we could go ahead and change the font weight if we wanted to, so make it thicker. And then yeah. we could also make the, the font even more prominent. So I've just redesigned the Thinkful website. I think it kind of looks great. 
Yeah, and one point about that too, Carl, is, is that when you're working with those uh, numbers like the uh, the pixels or the font weight, when you click on that, uh, you don't necessarily have to change it uh, with, by the number, but you know, using your up and down, you're able to uh, you know quickly go up and down in, in the percentage or the pixel numbers without having to actually put in the type in the number. That, that's a great point. That's actually how I was changing these. You could also do 23 pixel, for example, if, if that's what we wanted to do, or 100 yeah. pixel, or you, you can decrease it. Um, that's mm -hmm. so, so that's really nifty. And then I also think that if, so here, for example, this has, um, so let's add a display, for example. So here we can go and edit or add styles. So if we click in, in between these two lines, so it doesn't look like you can click, but actually if you just put your mouse in between and you click, uh, you can start adding styles. And so here we can add, for example, display. And if we don't do anything, Chrome will suggest or list all the options available. So you could do display block, inline block, inline, and so on and so forth. Same thing if we were to do float, right? Um, you can do inherit, left, right. So here we can float this um, to the right. And I just broke our entire design. Uh, and here you can just remove it by unchecking the box. Same thing here, right? We could remove the color, make it black. Um, and then if we refresh the page, it's all back to normal. So my designer is not going to get mad at me for this, which is great. Yeah, and and to that point uh, where you were showing how all the um, values uh, were shown the other day, there was in the forums a uh, question was asked on how do uh, developers uh, in our in us mentors um, me memorize everything. And uh, <laughs> we had to come back and say that that we don't. And I think and and it's apparent with these dev tools that you know the browser vendors know that we don't, so they help us out by giving us the list of suggestions. So um, it, it's always great that they do stuff like that because you know when you did display, I mean there was like 15 different values that you can use. Exactly. And another thing I wanted to point out is down here you can see how some styles are crossed out, and that basically means they're being overwritten. And in this, in our example, if I were to, so we're still looking at, at this H2 here behind every successful developer is a mentor. And if I were to uncheck this font family, look what's going to happen down here. Um, this font family now fires in. But whenever, because this one is more specific, if I enable it, it overrides this other style. Um, so that's kind of like the whole point of cascading style sheets, right? So the styles cascade. And um, this one is basically taking over, if, if I guess we could call it that way. Definitely, yes. Uh, and then another nifty thing is that if you hover over the different elements, um, you will see um, them highlighted. So you could, for example, see here, let's see, corset. So let's look at this one. So here's a course, and you can basically see all the different elements for that course. So here's um, the, whoops, I just lost it. So here it is. So here's the short line, as we can see. Here's the um, paragraph tag that explains what this front-end web development course is about. Um, and as I move my, my mouse through the DOM, it highlights the actual element, uh, which is a really, really way, easy way to know what's happening, where you're going. Yeah, and, and, and when you do that, it's always great when you're trying to get certain dimensions and when you're hovering over it, it shows you like what the box size is. And um, So yeah, I always find that to be a value. All right, and then the last important thing to mention, I think, is that here you can see how this specific item has all these selectors here, right? And so, or let's say these selectors here. So if I were to change the CSS value, it actually updates it for all of the four buttons on the page um, because it's basically changing the value for this specific green button class. Um, but if I just wanted to change this button, I could go here where it says element.style, so it's for only this element, uh, and do a background color red, for example. And so now this one is the only one that gets changed as opposed to all of them with this class. Yeah, that, that that's I mean, that, that's always good, and um, and it's always good too when you're making those changes, uh, Carl, to take notice when you're looking at the 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 file that it shows you that that certain uh, selectors at on the uh, right hand side of the file, um, it shows you the line number, and right. so that's so that's what you know. So if it says like 194, 
then that means that on one line 194 in that file, that's where this will be. Exactly. So this specific file is located under uh, thinkful.com slash slash dot CSS. And if I click it, um, I can actually see the, the CSS file itself. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, and so that this is in the sources tab. And again, to go back to where we were, you need to go back to the elements tab. Um, perfect. So now um, I'd like to look at something a bit more advanced uh, in terms of using the console. Um, so could we use, what can we use the console for? Well, in the, the smallest terms of getting used to the console is actually being able to find certain elements on the page. Um, so one of them is that you know you can use uh, you know the jQuery as you just did there and find the H1. And as you're hovering over, you see that. Um, and uh, and at the same time, um, you're able to go back and forth between the elements tab in the console. Um, so if you, you can find out information about a certain element that you have highlighted, uh, you're able to go back to the console. Uh, maybe let's select a different, um, yeah, so if you're on that H1 there, you can go back and then you can do the uh, dollar zero and it will bring up what the last one was that you were working with. So that's a really good point. So here I can basically, whoops, let me, there you go. So I could select here, for example, this paragraph tag and it says paragraph right underneath yeah. here and I can go to the console and this is a really cool shortcut and if I do dollar zero uh, it will reference that specific element so here is this paragraph tag that we just looked at now let's say I go back here and I look at let's code today I can go here and if I do dollar zero here's this h1 and if I do dollar one I can now access this paragraph tag so it's kind of like an array right where the latest item that you selected is always at position zero and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, I, th I think that's really, really powerful. And now, now that I have access to this element, so I can select it by, you know, going in the elements tab, clicking on it here, or just doing the, using the loop right here, and then using dollar zero. Um, and I can also use basic jQuery selector. So in this case, I want to select the H1. And here I have uh, the H1. Mm -hmm. And then I could also do this to select the class uh, T. So notice I'm using the period here for class T, primary uh, header. And then that should basically give us the, the main header here, as well as other headers uh, down the page that have this class. That's um, right. And then I could also call any um, JavaScript function on this. So I can call, for example, .html to get uh, the HTML of this um, Element and I could also call, for example, dot CSS and change the color to red. Is that the? I think that's the syntax. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So I could change it to. I don't think. I don't know if the change was noticeable. But I could change it to blue, for example. And so here I'm doing the same thing as before, but instead of using the elements panel, we're doing it straight from the console. So this is really really cool. Yeah. One other thing too to add to that, uh, Carl. So there you did uh, two two things of the particular same where you changed the color red to blue. If you wanted to do it to green, you know you don't have to type it all back in. You can actually use your arrow keys to oh. go back to things you did previously. Yeah, I forgot to mention that's a good point. So here's the blue, red. So I'm using the up arrow right now. Here's uh, the the command we did earlier with H T H one uh, and getting the HTML out of it. Um, so it really allows you basically to do changes uh, on the fly and see how the browser reacts to them um, before you go ahead and, and actually code them on your text editor, which is very, it's a very quick way to, to do things. Yeah, the prototyping is so much faster when you're actually looking at it in the browser where it's actually going to live. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Rob, uh, for this. This was really, really cool. No, I'll tell you what, it's great doing this, and uh, we'll continue to follow up and uh, get a little more advanced uh, as we continue on. Uh, next week, maybe we'll go ahead and start working with the console and also with some of the source uh, with being able to debug some JavaScript. Oh, perfect. So we'll look at debuggers, and I think you also said that we might be looking at um, setting up your um, dev environment so that the console is linked to your files, right? Yeah, that's right. Having it to where with the newer um, with, with Chrome and its newer abilities to uh, use workspaces, so you can actually, if you make any changes 
in the dev tools, it can persist back to your uh, IDE. So if you're using like Sublime Text, you got a CSS file open, you open that file up uh, here in the sources and the dev tools. If you make a change and the workspace is set up in this dev tools, that whatever changes you make will persist back to your IDE in that file. All right, well, I look forward to that. It sounds really exciting. Oh, I tell you, it's a lot of fun. I can't wait till we get on that. Perfect. See you, Rob. All right, thanks, Carl. Bye-bye.